What's up everybody, Jace Two Sets here, and I have teamed up with EK Waterblocks to bring you this video about their new custom loop configurator designed to take all of the guesswork out of building your first custom loop. So if you want to follow along, head on over to ekwb.com and click on the configurator button and let's go ahead and get started. Now the cool thing about this is EK has spent a lot of time building a database of chassis so that you can know that whether or not you have full compatibility based on your case. That's the hardest part for most people who have not spent a lot of time building custom loops is making sure they're going to fit in their case. So you start off here by putting in your chassis. I'm going to say I've got to define, I'm going to say I've got to define S. Let's do that. As you can see, by just typing in define S, because it's a wildcard search, it comes up with any result that matches define or S. So here's our define S right there. Motherboard, let's say I have got a gigabyte uh, Z170. What comes up with that? So we've got all our model numbers here, our different revisions. So that's pretty important. You can see anything that matched gigabyte and Z170 showed up. So let's say I've got a gigabyte Z170 gaming K3. Let's go with that one. And a graphics card, you need to be diligent with the parts that you put in to make sure the part numbers match. Because for instance, some folks would say, oh, I've got an NVIDIA 1080, but maybe they really have an ASUS Strix 1080. So if I put in NVIDIA 1080, it only comes up with the actual NVIDIA brand of 1080, which would be the Founders Edition card, which is not the same as, say, a Strix card or an Extreme card from Gigabyte or a Further Win from EVGA. They are different PCBs, and your block is not going to fit. So you have to do some legwork here to make sure you put in the right card. So if you have a Strix card, type Strix 1080, and then you will see the results for the various Strix cards. And then you can match the model number which they've put on every single block to make sure you have compatibility. It's up to you to make sure these numbers match. Please double check so you don't end up with a mistake. Now the number of RAM 6, that's because they do offer RAM cooling as well, but you don't have to cool the RAM because this next page here is where you tell it what you want to cool. So CPU is selected by default, but you could turn that off and say, I only want to build a GPU loop, but we're going to do a single loop here with CPU and GPU included. Now, when you move on to the next step here, it wants to know what your desired use for this system is going to be. Do you want silent operation? Do you want silent and overclocking? Or do you just want maximum overclocking with the maximum heat dissipation potential? Well, I'm going to say I want silent and overclocking. That way it can make a recommendation based on that. And the information we've already given it tells it we've got 275 watts of heat that we have to dissipate from the system. And because of this number, it's selected the XE360 triple radiator to go onto the front of our case. You can see it gives a little representation here of our case. And it's saying that we're going to have a front mounted rad. Obviously, it's going to fill up the whole front of the case. That's just a little... That's just a little diagram. Don't, don't think the radiator is going to be that small in your case. But it also anticipates a 27 Celsius water temp for our loop. Now, if you want to know a little more, you can click the expert mode. You can see the other radiators that will fit in your system. Now, they've selected the uh, Coolstream XE, which is a thicker radiator. It gives us 512 watts worth of heat that we can dissipate with that radiator. So what happens if we select one that's too small? Ah, look at that. We selected a 120, which only has 149 watts of dissipation. That's telling us here we've we've turned orange because we're not exactly we're not exactly doing ourselves any favors here by having a radiator that can't handle as much heat as we're going to be sending into it. As you can see, our expected liquid temperature is going to increase quite a bit, up to 38C. So it says right here we've selected a radiator that will sufficiently cool our hardware, but the temperatures will be higher. What I think is funny, a little side note, what's funny though, is if you deselect the radiator, it says our temperature is going to be infinity. Wow, that's hot. Hotter than the temperature of the sun. Well, that's because we have zero watts of cooling power, which means we are going to basically blow up our stuff. We don't want that. So anyway, moving on, I'm going to go ahead and go with their selection, move on to the next step, and just kind of carry all that over. Now we get to tell it what type of tubing we want to use. So if we select soft tubing, it's going to also give us some options regarding size and fittings, and it's going to make sure that they are compatible. And the same thing for the rigid tubing. The only difference with rigid is it's also going to add to the cart a kit for both a silicone insert so that you can bend the tubing as well as a saw so you can cut the tubing down to length. It's not going to include a heat gun though, so you're going to have to have one of those or go pick one up at Home Depot or whatever your local hardware store is. But we're going to do soft tubing because I think that is the friendliest way to start getting into custom loops. Uh, it, you spend a lot less time building it and actually enjoy it much sooner. Now we've got radio buttons here and we've got uh, options over here that we can select. They both do the same thing. If you select the radio buttons here, it kind of scrolls through the different tubing sizes and it makes sure that it applies fittings that are going to fit it as well. You can also click here and see a visual representation of what those tubing sizes actually are. 
uh, and you can make a selection there. Now you can also change the color of the tubing because they do have colored tubing, even for soft tubing. So you can select that as well. I'm gonna go with a clear. I like to see the color of the two or the coolant inside. Speaking of coolant, you can even choose coolant that you can add to this kit if you want to use theirs, or you can remove it in the cart later if you don't want it. I'm gonna go with UV blue. I think it looks really nice, especially on, on the screen right here. I like bright, vibrant colors. Now let's go with green, because I did green in Skunk Works. And we could change the color of our fittings. What if I go with, let's say nickel, because that's what I've got in my system right now. And we can change the pump top material as well. Let's say, so if you got black, you can't see through it, it's just solid black, you get red, plexi green, plexi blue. So the plexi means it's it's kind of translucent, you can see through it. I'm gonna go with clear, because I wanna see the fluid in there. And I'll leave it with a nickel plating on the bottom, but you can go with bare copper, or even a gold plating too. They have a gold one. I don't know what that's gonna do to the price, but I'm gonna leave it at nickel. It was just pretty much how I've got Skunk Works set up right here, exactly like that. Now the cool thing is it's also gonna show us what the coolant would look like flowing through the block if we have a Plexi Clear block. So you get an idea of what it's gonna look like. If you go with a black acetal, you can't see through it. So there's a representation of that. And we could also go with the nickel backplate, Plexi Clear. This is, this is literally exactly how Skunk Works is set up right now with these same blocks, this coolant, and uh, the backplates and everything else. So there you go. Now the next step here is we have to tell it what type of pump and reservoir do we wanna use? Do we wanna use a combo unit? Which I, I highly recommend the combo units. They're very easy to use, especially for first timers. Or you can separate it, as you can see right here. You, that means you have fittings and tube that go between the reservoir and the pump. I'm gonna go with a pump combo because I, again, I think they're very friendly. This is the one they recommend right here. It's the X-Res 100. It's got a PWM pump. It's like a DDC pump. It's got a very, small reservoir on that. I don't like that. I, I don't like the small reservoir because I think big reservoirs make up for big cases. Yeah, we'll go with that. Anyway, expert mode. These are the other options you could go with. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I wanna go with, I'm gonna go with this guy right here. I'm gonna go with the big D5 with a bigger reservoir. It just looks better. It looks more manly. That's what we're gonna go with right there. So we're adding that, or it only gave us options for pumps that it's going to be able to fit in that case because they've already done all the legwork and determined that that's the stuff that fits. So here is all the stuff that we've basically put together right here. You can see we've got a 734 milliliter capacity or just under three quarters of a liter uh, when it comes to how much fluid it can be held in the system. So it's only gonna recommend that we have one bottle of coolant because it's less than the one liter that comes in the bottle. We've got eight fittings required because there's two fittings per component. 275 watts worth of heat we have to dissipate and 277 liter per hour flow rate. So everything is good. Everything, we got plenty of cooling capacity. Everything's gonna fit in our case. Everything's gonna fit together. Tubing and fittings are gonna fit. Next step is to see what all the parts they recommend are. And it's gonna basically take all of those and create a list. It's got fans here. They use their Vardar fans. We've got our block, our pump, our radiator. We've even got, check this out. We've, they've even included a jumper and a three pin splitter. Uh, a three header splitter so that you can have one PWM header supplying power to all three fans. And the jumper is important. It's only $2.50. Don't take it out of your cart. This allows you to bleed your system without having to turn on the motherboard. It's a big deal. Leave that in there. So then all you gotta do now is, well, look at the price and cry a little bit because custom loops are not cheap, but boy, are they worth it and addicting once you get into it. Uh, you can add all this to your cart. So here's everything in our cart right here. They've added fans like we showed you because obviously you need fans for your radiator, but let's say you already have fans and you don't wanna use the Vardars. Well, you just click the little X right there and you can remove it from your cart. But the configurator is pretty much coming from the standpoint of you have nothing for your loop and you're gonna need everything, which is good because you wanna make sure that you have everything you need. If you don't have fans and you're gonna have a bad day trying to cool your stuff. Unfortunately, we can see that the backplate I chose is currently out of stock, so we could have we could switch that for the black one and see if it's in stock. Uh, but let's say we don't want the backplate at all. Maybe we want to save the 52 bucks and we don't want to put a backplate on the card. You can simply click the X. We're going to save a little bit of money there as well. And since we took the fans and the backplate out, you can see our kit came all the way down to $590. Still a little bit of a crunch to the wallet, but uh, cheaper than it was. So there you go, guys. That's the custom loop configurator. Go ahead and head on over to ekwb.com, play around with it, put in your chassis, uh, see what you come up with. And if you've built your own custom loop, why don't you go ahead and head on over to Twitter, I'm at Jace Two Cents, and tweet me pictures of your custom loops. I really love to check out the work that you guys are doing. And believe it or not, sometimes your builds turn out to be inspiration for me on various things that I do moving forward on the channel. Some of you guys have some really good ideas and some custom stuff I would have never even thought of, which is what makes this community so damn awesome. There's so many people doing so many different things. There's liter literally an infinite amount of ways 
that you can do this. Thanks for watching today's video. Again, thanks for EK Waterblocks for sponsoring today's video and making life easy for those people wanting to get into water cooling. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.